Hey, what's up, y'all? This is Rodney, and I'm back, and I just wanted to come and talk about some people real fast. All right, so listen, Tamar Braxton, Todrick Hall. I don't know anything about Todrick Hall. I know that he can sing, okay? I know that he can sing. Um, there are accusations and allegations of him not paying folk, um, him being slightly of a scammer, okay? A slight scammer T. Um, I don't know if that's true. Again, that's just accusations and allegations, okay? Um... Nonetheless, he is in the Big Brother house, Celebrity Big Brother. I'm not reviewing Celebrity Big Brother. I thought about it for a quick second, and then I came to the realization that, girl, Big Brother, I don't know if it still does, but I know in the past, girl, especially Big Brother, I don't know about Celebrity Big Brother. Girl, they come on three times a week. That's a lot, <laughs> okay? And then you got you kind of get swept into to the live feeds. The live feeds is where it really happens at. Like, the show... Uh, that's just a little uh, whatever. Girl, if you really want to know the real tea, the live feeds is what you need to watch, right? Or keep up with. Anyways, so Todrick. Todrick is in the house, and this is what he had to say about Tamar. Um, Todrick talking about Tamar Braxton said that she's been on two of his albums, that she is super talented, but sometimes her personality overshadows that talent and that people focus on that. Says that Tamar is like a drag queen trapped in a woman's body. Tamar responded and said, I'm not falling out with my real friend over a TV show. We will talk when he leave the house. This is all terrible. Broken heart emoji, hashtag CBBUS3. She also tweeted, um, I doubt that he means what he's saying. He sent me this right before going into the house. That place can bring the crazy out of people when they really want to win. I'm sure it's all just a game, at least I hope. I don't know if he said something else. I did look for the clips to see if I could hear how the conversation went, and I couldn't find any clips, which is, you know, kind of weird because usually you can find clips, especially if a clip is trending on Big Brother. You can usually find it, but I couldn't find anything. So, again, I'm not sure if he added more to it or if this is all, uh, all of what he said. Let me just say this. What, one thing we're not going to do is sit here and act like, Tamar Braxton, don't act like a punk on steroids times 10. The truth of the matter is we all, there are different layers. There are different types of people in the LGBTQ, okay? But I think one of the complaints that you have heard from me and other gay boys is the truth of the matter is as much as we might cut up online, the boys are not walking around really acting like Tamar. <laughs> and that's just what it comes down to. <laughs> They're not. And I think that Tamar, she just act like that's, it's just, she acts like a drag queen. She acts like she's in character all the time, like, like a drag queen will act on stage trying to, you know, put a show on for the people. I think that that does overshadow her talent. I think because Tamar is so and dot com and dot stupid that people don't pay attention to how talented she really is. I don't see what Todrick said. I don't what did he say that was wrong? She's super talented, but sometimes her personality overshadows that and people focus on that. They do. They do. I don't think that I've ever seen Tamar sit down and have a serious conversation with all of the dramatics. Even when she was on the Yana, it was still a whole bunch of neck popping in, girl. Like, girl, can you just calm down? Even the people that have met me in real life, will tell you, girl, I'm walking, I'm pumping through the mall like a normal person. I'm not, I'm not walking out doing all that twisting and not, nothing wrong with twisting. I think came out the wrong way. I'm not in the mall kicking and twirling and twisting and doing cartwheels and flips and kicks. Everybody who has met me, whether it was at my job, whether it was me just walking through the mall at H and M at Macy's, girl, whatever. At the, at the club, will tell you, oh, girl, he just walked in like normal. Girl, I saw him, girl, he was acting normal. Girl, did we turn it up a little bit and be like, yes, slap? But girl, people don't 
not really walking around like that every night. Tamar really does act like, it almost feels like Tamar met somebody who does act like that within the community. And she just like, was like, yes. And then she just went overboard with it. I don't know. I don't know. I don't think that Topic said anything wrong. Um, Tamar is delusional. And I think that other people are delusional too if they feel as though that's not how Tamar acts. Tamar does act like a drag queen trapped in a woman's body. It's very much over the top. <laughs> Tamar, you don't think you act like that? Tamar, you don't think you act like that? It's a little hot in here. I got my heat on. I didn't realize it was so cold outside. Girl, last night I walked outside. I was like, I'm just walking. I'm going to walk and just, you know, walk until I find something I want to eat. Girl, I walked outside. I said, ooh. It's got a little chilly. It came out of nowhere. Anyway, so I got my heat on. It's a little hot in here. All right. Um, Nick Cannon. Nick Cannon feels heavy guilt for not spending more time with late son Zen. Zen? Zen? Is his name Zen or Zen? Zen. This is according to B. Scott. Nick Cannon is still grieving the loss of his son, who passed away in December at just five months old. In a podcast appearance with Dr. Laura Bierman, Nick revealed he still feels guilt surrounding the death of his son. One thing that keeps me up at night there's this heavy, heavy guilt with the fact that I didn't get to spend time like I really wanted to with Zen, the 41-year-old father of seven disclosed. Scott, 28, shared in January that she and Cannon had known since August that their son Zen's time would be limited due to his brain tumor. The TV personality revealed on his talk show that he was able to spend his, son, his son's last few days with him and that he made a valid effort to spend the most quality time that he could. In the podcast with Beerman, he added that he has other children of similar age whom he feels guilty for not being there every day. I walk around with a backpack full of guilt, Cannon said, but at least I know that the harder that I work, then it makes the guilt feel, feel the guilt easier to deal with. The rapper added, the ability to provide for his children financially lessens the guilt he feels for not being for not being for not being there physically. They put them. Um, Cannon is also dad to ten-year-old twins Moroccan and Monroe, with ex-wife Mariah Carey, four-year-old son Golden, and one-year-old daughter Powerful with Britney Bell, um, five-month-old twins Zion and Z Zillion with Abby De La Rosa and is expecting his eighth child with Bree Tessie. We hate to say it, but maybe if he didn't have so many other baby mothers and children to spend time with, he wouldn't feel so guilty about not spending enough time with Zen. There's much more than being a parent than simply fathering children. just you know I'm, I'm trying to make sure i choose my words carefully because this is a very sensitive subject especially with you know a child passing away i don't think it takes a rocket scientist to know that there is no way humanly possible that you can father so many kids and these kids be spread around at different addresses and you think that you can devote the amount of attention that needs to be devoted to children. It's not going to happen. And then you think, like I have been saying for, girl, what now? <laughs> A year or so now, however, when Nick Cannon start popping out these children. And then you think, like a lot of us have said, but there's also a group of people out there who think that what Nick Cannon is doing is not wrong. Because he can provide financially to the children. You couldn't even be there 
when your son needed you the most and you have been knowing that your son was sick. But maybe if you didn't have all these children floating around, you could have been there more for your son. Now you being there, you know, wouldn't have stopped your son from dying but you could have at least spent more quality time with your child before he transitioned. I keep telling y'all that at best, Nick Cannon is a face time father. Y'all think cause Nick Cannon can provide a little bit of money to these children that that is okay. There are people who have grown up in households with their brothers and sisters, mother, and fathers and still have, will tell you to this day as grown people walking around that they felt neglected in their, in, in their home. They didn't get enough attention from their father or their mother and they all grew up in the same house. So how the heck do you think that Nick Cannon is giving these kids the attention that they need when they spread around at different addresses? I was really over here. I'm just trying to understand. Whoever Nick Cannon going through, going to for therapy, I know he is wearing his therapist out. Because the stuff that Nick Cannon been saying in his interview, it just don't make sense. And it's not even all the stuff that he said. It's some more stuff that we're going to get into. <laughs> Nick Cannon got eight children. What, five baby mamas, they said? Or had eight children? Or about to have eight children. Girl, he got a lot of kids. And they spread around town. And he thinks because he can provide financial support to these kids, then that's good enough. Don't get it twisted. You definitely need money. Okay, everybody needs money in order to survive. That's just period. Money is very, 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 very important. Okay? Don't get in my comment section acting like money ain't everything because it's almost it's close to it. Can't nobody survive without money. And that's just what it comes down to. So money is very important. With that being said. When it comes to like having children, I just believe really, once you reach a certain status financially, like you wouldn't have to work so hard, Nick, if you didn't have all these kids. <laughs> like that's the gag. You have to work now because you got about eight, you got about eight, nine kids running around. And I don't know what the other baby mamas do because they could be very well successful. Right? They could be successful girls. About the only one that probably don't need your money, but gonna take it, is Mariah. Oh, girl, just because I got some money don't mean that you're not gonna help raise these kids. That's what I'm trying to say. So even Mariah, I mean, Mariah Carey don't need Nick Cannon's money, but girl, I didn't make these children by myself, so I'm not taking care of these children by myself. Girl, here go your half of this tuition bill. <laughs> Send it. Okay? I don't know, girl. It's just a mess. It's 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 a mess. Anyways, what else? I'm so tired of talking about Wendy Williams. That's my girl. Y'all know I love her to pieces. Um, Wendy Williams legal battle against Wells Fargo sealed. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just look. I, I get that Wells Fargo wants to look out for Wendy Williams. I'm guessing that whatever they're doing, they feel like they need to because. It's that important. But girl, <laughs> girl, once this gets resolved, Wendy would be a fool if she didn't snatch her money out of Wells Fargo. But again, like I said, it makes sense. Like they had, I'm hoping they had to have seen some type of suspicious activity going on with Wendy's account for them to take it this far. Something going on, right? But I also feel like you shouldn't have that much power, baby. The way I would be setting it off at Wells Fargo, girl. But you can't act like that. I guess you can't, you can't set it off. 
You can't set it off because then people gonna say you acting a fool. But girl, Wendy has every right to act the fool. Now it's a video going around of her on the beach. The wind is blowing. You know, she, you know, she was being a little shady in the video. You know, you heard how she said when her and her son and her uh, and the other son. Girl, did she call Kevin her son? I don't know, girl. Kevin her ex-husband. She, you know, let, let it be known that she's coming back to the Wendy Williams show. It was good to see her. It was good to hear her voice. She sounds normal. She sounds like Wendy Williams. Um, I don't know. It's just like everything is just, it's just, it's like they want us to believe that Wendy is okay. But baby, mama ain't been to work since last year. You see what I'm saying? Like, I don't even know when this video was shot. Because they're trying to make it seem as though it was just shot the other day. Listen, Wendy ain't been to work since what? July, they said? July, June, July, August. When did the Wendy Williams show come back on? August, September? Wendy ain't been to work since girl last year. Wendy is not okay. My auntie is not okay. Something going on. But that don't mean that Wells Fargo should be able to have the right to like just girl block her money. I don't know, girl. I don't know. It's a mess if you ask me. They also said that Wendy Williams and Kevin, her ex-husband, um, are supposedly, I guess, <laughs> I don't know what's going on with Wendy. I don't know if she and Kevin are talking. I don't know. It, if that is true, I mean, this is the thing. They have a child together, but girl, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and say it. Wendy really doesn't need to have any contact with her ex-husband unless it has something to do with their son. But their son is a 21-year-old grown man. Wendy really don't have no need. Uh, really, is, it, is it really necessary to talk to Kevin about their son? Like, what can y'all talk about? His school, His grades in school? <laughs> I don't know. I hope Wendy ain't let that man back into her life. I hope not. And if she has, that just goes to show how much power and control he had over Wendy Williams and the Wendy Williams brand. Like, if she is talking to that man to the point where that's the only way to get her back on track is by hearing his voice or allowing him back into her circle, I just think that is so, like... Girl, there's no way a person can do as much as what this man has done to you. Even though he played an important part in her career, right? But it just goes to show that, girl, y'all cannot give these men y'all all. Like, it just comes a point in, it just comes a point in life, like, girl, we have to just, I was about to, say, I was about to go into a whole rant that ain't had nothing to do with nothing. <laughs> I'll talk to y'all later. <laughs> Bye.